Hi guys, Samantha from Do Summer Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a pendant similar to the one that I have here. And now this is one that I created a few years back uh, and I have, um, I quite like it and very fond of it uh, but today we're going to be doing a more professional version of it. This one you can see it's not quite square, I'm not happy with the bail on the back and just in general I feel we could do better. So you're going to need two pieces of pearl white Prima Polymer Clay. Uh, any brand of pearl white will work, uh, as long as it's a strong, recommendable black brand of polymer clay. But basically you're going to need two sheets of white polymer clay, pearl white polymer clay, rolled out to about 2mm thick. Okay, and we're going to stamp both of these sheets uh, with my uh, Dragon Seal Pebble Stamp. Any pebble stamp will work, but this is the one I'm using. I'm going to quickly give it a coat of water and then I'm going to grab one of my sheets I'm going to quickly spray the back with some water you can also use cornstarch but I don't really want to use cornstarch in this case uh, because I don't want the uh, clay to be non-stick which is what the cornstarch will cause so I prefer to use water, at least in this project. Not all projects I use water. A lot of the time I will use cornstarch. But in this one I have chosen to use water as a release agent. Okay. And just make sure you press that well. I'll just go over it twice or so with the roller. Okay, more than twice. Just enough to smooth it out. And then we'll lift it out. You can see, nice deep texture. Repeat with your other piece. And there are our two textures. So I'm going to put one to the side. Uh, we will do a micro shift with it in a little while. And the other one, I'm just going to quickly trim away this excess. Uh, you can do the same with the other one. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, we're going to be putting alcohol ink on this. And I don't want to um, get alcohol ink on clay that I'm ultimately not going to use. Because you can use that again. Okay. And I'm actually going to put this onto a piece of paper plain printing paper that is. And the reason for this is so that you can soak up any excess ink uh, that might spill off the edges so that you just end up with a tidier um, work area. Okay, and I'm going to be using Pinata inks, Sapphire Blue and Baja Blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly spray the surface with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, anything above 50% will work. I'm using 99% but again anything above 50 will work. And take your inks, dab them around as you wish. Okay, and now the reason we sprayed it with the alcohol is to keep those inks nice and wet uh, while I'm busy dabbing them around. Alright, that should be enough. Then we're just going to take a brush. There we go. And I actually should probably get a larger brush than this. Okay, and then just with your brush, dab around. And you're going to get slight variations in blue. If you don't have two types of uh, blues, that's fine, one will work. And you're just going to dab them over like so. Make sure you cover up all of that pearl white. Okay. Okay. Then put that to the side and let it dry. Okay. Then just quickly give your surface a wipe. And then we're going to do the mic shift while we wait for that to soak in. So just grab a blade. And again, I'm just going to quickly trim away this excess. You do not have to. I just find that the uh, mic shift is easier when you do that. Okay, and let me just position this into a spot that looks good for you. Okay. And then press down. Don't press too hard, but you want it to be stuck to your tile. I'm using a ceramic tile. You can also use a glass tile for this. 
And then my preferred method is to take a sharp flexible blade, take a little, uh, make a little bow in the blade and then shave. Now there are other methods uh, to create a mic shift, like for instance you can uh, stick this onto the side of a jaw and shave like that, but I personally prefer this method. It's the method I have always used and it just works the best for me. It's the one that I practice so I just have more control. But whichever one works best for you is good. So you can see we're just shaving off that raised pattern. And now because it is a metallic clay, you will end up with a image of your texture. This will not work with opaque clays, it will not work with translucent clays, it will only work with metallic clays. So that is why we're using pearl white. It is a metallic clay. Okay, and that's what you're going to be left with. Now I just like to take a scrap of pearl white and then just use that to kind of pick up all these little bits and pieces that were um, created uh, by shaving. You want to get them away from your tech, your uh, mic shift. You don't want them on there. And then just pick up the excess. Okay, then I'll just pick this up. I'm just going to brush over the surface to make sure that I've got rid of any uh, loose ends, little bits that are on the surface, because you will see that once you flatten it out. Then I will grab two pieces of plain printing paper again. One for the back and one for the front. And then you're going to burnish this. And this will get rid of any raised um, areas. It will get rid of any cracks or any, any surface texture. You want this to be a completely smooth veneer uh, with an image in it. So I'll just continue burnishing this and you want to press quite hard when you're doing this. It will also give it a nice even texture which means that sanding later on is basically non-existent. Which is great because I know you all don't really like to sand. I don't like to sand either. Okay, so let's see if that was enough. Okay, now you should be able to tilt it around and you can see that there's an image there. It gets better once it's baked. You should also run your finger over it and you'll be able to see any te feel any texture. Like there's one bit there and around the edges there's some texture as well. So continue burnishing until that's gone. Okay, and there we go. So that is what we should end up with. Okay, now I'm going to put this to the side. Now if you stop at any point during this project, uh, like to leave your pieces for an hour to do something, uh, make sure that you take them off the pieces of paper because the paper will leach the polymer clay which will draw out the... Uh, oils in it and it will make it brittle and it will make it dry and it's something you don't want. So make sure not to leave it on your pieces of paper for too long. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to transfer it to a clean piece. And this is why I said working on the paper works really well. Okay. Now I want to get rid of a lot of the excess ink on the top here. So I'm going to take my dirty piece actually because why not. And you can see that paper will soak up that ink. Now don't press too hard, you're just pressing on the surface to get rid of the excess ink on the top. And there you can see how that looks. This will be good for those of you that do scrapbooking, because you could use something like that. Okay, now take some isopropyl alcohol. The higher the concentration, the better. Uh, but anything over 50 should work, though um, the higher it is, the quicker it will work. Take your isopropyl alcohol, spray it onto a wet wipe or rag of some sort, and then just brush over the top of your texture. And the goal is to remove some of that ink, just from the raised areas, not the indents. There you can see. And this is why I'm saying the higher the concentration of the alcohol, the easier this is, the quicker it will be removed. Okay, now we don't want it to be pure white. That is not the goal. We want it to be a lighter blue. Okay, and that 
should just about work. Okay, put that to the side. And then we're going to burnish this as well. So burnish nice and hot. And now you might find that the ink soaks into the paper. That's fine. Any excess ink needs to be soaked up. So you can see there how it will soak up that excess in the veins. That's fine. And just continue burnishing until you flatten out your texture like you did with the uh, previous piece. Okay, and then we're going to lift this up and see how it looks. And there, again, for those of you that do scrapbooking, that's really interesting. Now you can see we have a few areas that lifted. Just gently lay those back down. And then I'm just going to burnish again. And now the reason it stuck was because it had the alcohol ink on it. And the alcohol ink can be a little sticky. So sometimes you need to use two pieces of paper just to get the right burnish off. There we go. And you can see nowhere near as much ink came off that time around. All right. And so there are our two veneers. Okay. So now what I want to do is I would like to bring over my cutters and I'm going to be using my soft squares cutter set and I'm just going to quickly choose the size of my pendants I think it's going to be about this size I think that captures enough actually maybe I want it one size larger yeah one size larger will work yeah that captures plenty So just double checking that. Then we are going to just quickly and gently keep your fingers out of the way. Lift this off of your tile. Again, always keep your fingers out of the way when doing this. And it shouldn't be stuck down too hard. And we can do the same for the mic shift. Just quickly lift that off. Alright, so now we're going to start with this one, gently tap that down to the surface, it mustn't be pressed down too hard, just enough that it's going to stay there while you cut your piece. And press, and lift. Then you're going to, now this is a graduated set, so I want to go, so this was the one we used, I want to skip one, and I want to use this one next. I want to position it on the edge here, and let's see, does that look good? You always check, I might want to skip down one more, because I want a nice big border over here. and then that means that this one will be here okay so I'm happy with that so now I just need to position that into the correct spot it should line up on both sides then press firmly like so then you skip down two again and line that one up and press Alright, then take your blade, just gently trim this excess off. Like so. Right. And now everything I have done here you will do for the pearl white one as well. Now you can see I made a mistake here, I didn't skip down far enough, that's fine, we just need this part here. So ideally you do the same thing as I did here, I made a little mistake. Now keep in mind, mistakes with the pull white, not that big of an issue, especially when it comes to the mic shift, because the mic shift, if you mess it up, you can just put it back uh, into your, um, your, um, 
and I'm just going to save this little square here. You can just put that back in with your pearl white and redo the marker shift. Okay, now I'm just gently going to lift this up, and this is why I said to not stick them down too hard. You want to lift up each of these pieces. So, okay, then I'm going to be working on a piece of paper just so that they're easy enough to maneuver when I need them to. Okay, and I'm going to start with my largest blue, and I'm going to bring over that piece of pearl white, and that should slot in like so, as you can see. Then you take your blue again. There's a little hair here. Get rid of that. That should also slot in, like so. Okay, and then with this one, ideally you would have had the pearl white at the top, but I didn't. I made a little accident there, but that's fine. You can just have a smaller piece, like so. All right. So now you're going to put that to the side and you're going to take your pearl white and roll it out into a solid sheet. Okay, and this is about a millimeter thick. And you'll bring over these again. And this is going to be that actually. Then pick them up. Place them on two. Gently tap them down into place. You can even use the uh, cutters that you used to just check that they are the right size, just about, to make sure that there's no areas straying. Okay. Then take your paper. And I'm just going to very lightly burnish it. I do not burnish this very hard because I do not want to distort anything. I just burnish it gently so that it's stuck down onto that paper. And also if there were any gaps it should close them up. But I do want the seam between the two layers to be visible. So I'll just burnish that as much as I feel it needs to be burnished. So that looks good. And notice how I'm burnishing specifically on the line. So you can be very specific on where you're smoothing. There you go. I'll repeat for the other one. Okay. Then take your cutter. Position it into the right position. And then cut down. Press down hard. Now it might stick in the cutter, that's fine. You generally can just gently press that out. There we go. As you can see there. Now get rid of that. Flip that over. And then you want to just gently run your fingers around the sides just to get rid of any craggly edges that might be there. Again, this is to remove the necessity for sanding. Okay. And there we go. And that's about it. That's all you really need to do. That will then go into the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And then when it's done, uh, we're basically going to maybe give the sides a quick sand to remove this blue substance, but we shouldn't need to. Oops. The back should have a nice matte finish. Uh, you might need to gently trim them, so you can see here there's a little bit of residue that might need to get sanded away, but basically it'll be very, very small amount of sanding. Then we'll resin them and string them. 
Alright, and here they are out of the oven. So this one I've given a quick sand on the back just to smooth it out because you have a few ridges. And I've also given the sides a very quick sand just to smooth them out. Now if you do not want these kind of drag marks on them, you can always do the uh, smear technique that I show uh, in one of my videos. I will provide a link to it in the description below. Uh, but it's not absolutely necessary. So now we are going to sand uh, this piece. And now we'll start with the back. We'll also sand the sides and then I want to do a little bit of sanding on the front. But all of this is going to be done with 600 grit sandpaper. So first you're going to sand these edges. And you can see there, a bit of stuff comes off. Because you've got a bit of a ridge here. And that needs to get taken away. You can even, if it's a fairly large ridge, you can even bring over a craft knife and help uh, the sandpaper move along quicker by just gently scraping that away. But you do need a steady hand for this because you can very easily gouge your clay. So if you're uh, not very confident uh, with doing this, the sanding will do it. It's just that this uh, will make it move quite a bit faster. And then once you've finished taking away these edges, you will then continue to sand. And you want to sand the whole back and this will give it a nice matte finish. And if you want to sand up through the higher grits you most certainly can. Uh, but I tend to just leave it on this grit. It's a nice smooth grit, it will feel nice. And because of the pearl white um, it's just going to give it a kind of matte uh, finish. Which is nice, I like that. Okay, Then you want to do the same for the sides. You don't need to trim them very often, but you do need to give it a pretty good sand. So just drag it along like so, and that will smooth it out nicely. Okay. Then the last thing I like to do is I like to just try to give this mic shift in here a sand. Now this is not absolutely necessary, but what I find is once you've put the resin on, if you've sanded it a bit, uh, the image seems to come out clearer once you've just given it a very light sand. And I think the reason for that is because uh, you remove any excess mica particles that are floating around on top of the clay and instead you reveal the true pattern. I'm not sure if the camera picked that up, but there was definitely a change in the pattern there. It just became a lot more visible. And I'll even give this a very light sand, again with the 600 grit, and not a heavy sand, just enough to remove the... Um, I apologise for that, that was the cat asking to go out. Anyway, you just give it a very quick light sand just to remove any floating mica particles. So if I move this around here, hopefully you can see that that sparkle is kind of contained versus this one where it's kind of flashing everywhere. And I just find that it makes the image easier to, um, it just makes the image clearer once you put the res on. Now it's not something that's absolutely necessary and you do need to be careful, 600 is the lowest grit I'd do this with, no lower. Uh, and it's a very quick sand as you can see. Right, so now we are going to move on to coating these in resin. So I've got a quick resin mat here. Just space those apart. And I'm going to be using Lisa Bavelka's Magic Gloss UV Resin. I'm just going to pour a bit on. And starting with the middle and I'm pouring on. And this is a fairly large pendant so I'm going to need a bit of quite a bit of resin on there. But there, hopefully you can see the difference there with the resin. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm just going to drag that resin out. Now that's probably not enough resin. Uh, but you start off with a small amount, you drag it out see if it pulls away from the edges, if it does pull away from the edges add a bit more resin and then wait a bit, see if it pulls away again, add more resin the reason you don't dump a whole lot of resin onto the surface uh, in the beginning is because it can very easily spill off of one of the edges so it's better to just put on a bit see if that's enough and if not you can always add more it's very hard to take away resin versus adding more now you might see here that there are a few air bubbles, little bubbles in there, so what I like to do is I like to just go and pick them up off the bottom. 
and then I will let them sit there for a little while so that they rise and then all you do is you can either pop them if they're fairly large and if they won't pop you can always just scoop them out like so and I'm going to quickly cover this one as well right and there we go so now I'm just going to take my UV light and I will uh, cure these for roughly around 15 to 20 minutes under the UV light until they are completely hard to the touch And here they are out of the UV light. So you can see how nice that pearl white has come out. So you can see there, as I turn that around, it looks really quite nice. Now I really like the matte version as well. If you want to keep the uh, matte version and not put resin on, that's fine. Just seal it with some Renaissance wax or a uh, matte sealer, that will work as well. Uh, but I really wanted to use the resin. So now I need to drill a hole. So I'm just going to bring over a pin drill, position it at the top, and make a little hole, and then I'll make the hole with the drill. And there we go. Now something I want to point out that is very important if you're going to be using any sort of drill with the Polymer Clan resin is that you always drill it resin side first and then you drill and then you can go through both ways. But when you're making your first hole you always go through resin first back through to the Polymer Clan. And the reason for this is because then you're pushing the resin down onto the clay and it won't pop up. If you're going through from the Polymer Clay side first you'll end up pushing up the resin up and off the clay. So it's very important to do it that way around. Other than that though, there's uh, not really much to it. So I'm also going to just quickly drill this one. Again, just going to go over that again. I make a little hole just automatically, uh, just manually I mean. Uh, and the reason for that is because I like to get a little groove for my drill to sit in. And then I'll do the pushing up and down. Now the reason I put a little groove in there is because otherwise the drill can slip around a bit and then you'll end up scratching your resin. If you do scratch the resin you'll need to put another layer of resin over top and that will cover up the scratch. But again, always better to avoid that. So that's why I do a little hole first. Alright, so now I've got a little bale here. I'll hook that into place. Bring over my um, pliers. Squish that into place. And there we go. Got a very easy to apply bale. And then I'll just use a ready made rubber cord. You could go more complicated if you want, but this is a very simple way to do it. And I think it looks quite nice. There we go. I'll finish off the other one as well. Okay, and there we go. That is basically it for today's tutorial. So, it's really easy to do. Uh, you can even um, play around with different texture stamps. I really like the pebble effect, but again, you can try it out with different texture stamps. Uh, another thing that you can do also is replace the alcohol ink with mica powder or pastel. That also works uh, really well with colouring the piece. Uh, also, it doesn't have to be pearl white. You can use white as well. Uh, any light coloured clay was also, would also work. Um, though with something like black or darker colours you might want to think about what you use. Uh, you wouldn't be able to use alcohol ink, but something like gold mica powder might work. Um, though it wouldn't be as effective. At least I don't think it would be as effective. Anyway, that's basically it. If you would like to support this channel and see more tutorials like this, please do consider becoming a patron. It is really helpful. Uh, I have exclusive tutorials on there for patrons only. So please do check that out. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.